Hey guys, Mike here. So you might have noticed Warren Buffett made these three purchases and they're new to his portfolio and they are three home builders. And you can see this is not small purchases, about $800 million worth, almost 6 million shares of DHI, which is DR Horton. And then you can see 11,000 NBR and about 153,000 in Lenar. But what you might not know is this is his second big bet on the real estate industry. And I'll show you what he did with the first one I'm talking about and how well he did. I'll also show you why he purchased three of them and not just one builder. And also really why I think he's making this bet. And so if we get into what he's probably looking at here, guys, it's simply this. You have U.S. existing home sales. We're not selling, right? Almost 80% of people are sitting in rates below 4% at this point in time. Quite a few are sitting in below 3 And you can see these are existing home sales, which haven't been this low since like 2014, I believe it is. And then you go over here, nearly one-third of four-sale homes are new construction now. And you can see, I mean... We've never seen anything really like this. And so this is something new. And so going forward, if we're not selling and rates stay high for a long period of time and prices in homes stay high for a long period of time or continue or actually shoot up even more, who, what are people going to buy? New homes? Well, they ain't going to have any choice. So this number could actually increase. Don't be surprised on that. What else is he looking at? The total housing inventory. It is in the toilet. Look at this. That's 2010 till now. And you're seeing a little hope that maybe it increases. But these home builders can't build these houses fast enough to meet future demand. And then when you look at this, U.S. homeowner vacancy rates. Look at where it's at. <laughs> it's, you can't get no lower. This goes all the way back into the 50s. And look how low that is. The lowest we've ever seen. If you watch my channel long enough, you know, always like to say, it's a year of first, right? And this is another one. That's the vacancy rate. Then you look at this right here. Earnings are falling for these home builders, but the future looks bright. And if we look at the, the main part of this right here, with all three of these home builders reporting declining earnings per share, it seems hard to reconcile why home builders in general are faring well and why Buffett is interesting. Home building is a classic early stage cyclical, which means it is one of the first industries to emerge from a recession, which by the way, we haven't been in a recession yet. This didn't happen after the Great Recession because of excess inventory. The excess inventory problem has now reversed, and the National Association of Realtors estimates a housing gap of 5.5 to 6.8 million units. To put that into perspective, housing starts are running at 1.4 million unit pace. So we got quite a ways to go before we get back to that. And then you look at home builders got to build. We can see they're actually slowing down the building, it looks like. Because for a while there, what was happening, they couldn't get wood, it was too expensive, brick, any kind of uh, item or commodity that you had to build with was through the roof. So they actually had to hold off, which actually did what to the inventory? Shrank it even more. And so if they keep this pace up, then obviously that's going to keep a supply constraint in place. And guys, before we continue, if you're getting anything out of this, please hit that thumbs up down there. I really appreciate it. And if you like the material here in the videos, think about subscribing. And so you can see what him and his firm is looking at, right? Now the question is, why did he buy three of them? Why not just the one? And it's simply, one, don't put all your eggs in one basket. And two, these companies actually build in different areas. And you can see he didn't actually you know, pick scrubs here. He picked the number one, the number two, and the number four builders out there. Not sure why he didn't pick Polte. I'm sure he had his reasons for it. And you can look at the 2021 total closings and see how many houses these folks sold. And when you come over here, you can see what is real estate. It's regional, right? What's going on here in Florida, it might be totally different what's going on, let's say, somewhere in Nevada, okay? And these home builders, you can see here's D.R. Horton. They're like the biggest out there. And they're in many, many states, right? They have their own business model, what prices they charge and everything like that. But then when you switch over here and you go to NVR, look at them. They're only in 35 metropolitan areas in 15 states and all on the East Coast right here. And then you go to the last one, Lennar, and they're sitting there at number one in market share position in many of these cities, but also sitting at number two in all the cities to the right that you can see. So they're nowhere in the Midwest, basically just West Coast, East Coast type folks, somewhere in the South. And so he's got all his bases covered 
to where these home builders are building because what happens again you have one red hot market and another's a cold market right it depends on what's going on right now and so like in florida it's a hot market maybe somewhere in like i don't know michigan maybe the the real estate market's a little bit colder and so i think that's one reason he did it but two look at these charts right these charts are all identical and what i mean by that is you're going to have two trend lines, one short term trend line, one's a long term trend line, and then you got your moving averages. And every one of these stocks ran up like crazy. He bought about right in the middle right there. But every one of them have broke their 50 moving average. They all have three bounces off this long term trend line, which goes from 2020 right there. And you can see this with NVR again, two trend lines broke the 50 heading to the 100. And then you look at this long term trend line. We zoom out right here. And you got three bounces. They all look identical, right? Go to Lennar, last one. Broke the 50, heading to the 100, actually sitting on its 100. Two trend lines, one shorter term, you got multiple bounces. And then the longer term, where you're sitting there with three identical bounces. It seemed like they moved together, correct? And then when you look at how much of a drawdown they have to that long term trend line, they're all identical 26% there, 25% there. And you go to the last one. And it's going to be the same thing, around 26%. So all identical charts, they all move the same. So he basically knows on the stock chart what's going to be happening to them. But of course, I like to do a little more digging. And I found out this is not his first bet into the real estate industry. He did it before the last run up to the 08 crash. How did he do it? He did it a little bit differently. He goes out and he could see what was going to happen. And so in 2000, what's he do? He buys a furniture retailer because you have to buy furniture when you're going to own homes. Then what does he do in 2000 as well? He goes out and he buys one of the biggest brick manufacturers out there. And then after that, in 2000, he goes out and also buys a commercial roofing company. And then in 2001, he goes and buys another brick company to add to his Acme purchase. And then lastly, you got to go ahead and have flooring, right? So he goes out and buys one of the biggest carpet manufacturers there is out there. And I'm sure you know the rest of the story. It turned out really well for him because the real estate market started to boom leading up into 2006, 2007 before we had this horrific crash. So he made a killing. And so now what is he looking at? Could be looking at this right here. Here was housing starts from 2000, 2005. That right there is a nice run up, okay? Whole lot of carpets being sold, whole lot of roofs being sold, whole lot of bricks to make them, and a whole lot of furniture being sold. So that was a good one, right? Now what does he see happening? Over here to the right, it says, well, maybe we're facing to get ready to go on another run, right? What else is he seeing? Maybe United States new home sales. Well, look what happened in 2000, 2005. Heck of a time to own a, a brick carpet and roofing company, right? huge run okay then he looks to the right and you think well maybe after a drawdown we're getting ready to go ahead and go on another run and if he is right and you know warren buffett usually likes to be a little early on this then you know he can make a nice tidy profit all right and also just for giggles you know he likes his dividends and of course dhi he which he owns almost six million shares and pays 80 cents a year and then lenar Pays about a dollar per share. So he's collecting on the side, which is pennies to him, around 4.4 million, I believe it is, in dividends. And so we'll have to see if this investment works out. Again, Berkshire Hathaway tends not to be like an active investor where they're moving in and out of positions every quarter. So to me, it looks like this is more of a long-term play uh, to see how it plays out and stuff, just with all the different factors playing right now, which we've really never seen in the real estate market before. And so let me know what you think down in the comments about that and stuff. And again, you know, he likes to be early. They usually hold, you know, long term and stuff. Again, these stocks that I showed you in the charts, they needed to sell off. They got way ahead of themselves. Okay. And so now they're finally maybe starting to come in line. We'll see uh, when they get get a bounce and stuff like that. But, you know, again, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this is a good long term play or not? What do you think is going to happen to the real estate market? Because this is interesting times to say the least. And so please hit that like and subscribe button if you got anything out of this. Really appreciate it. And I will see you later.